Once when Jesus was praying in solitude and the disciples were with him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the ancient prophets has arisen. Then he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said in reply, The Christ of God. He rebuked them and directed them not to tell this to anyone. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the liturgical memorial of Saint Pia of Pietrocina, a Capuchin saint, Italian, whose devotion has spread throughout the world very quickly. He really deserves it, someone endearing, someone full of charity. Just remember the hospital he founded in San Giovanni Rotondo, in the remote south of Italy, where he welcomed thousands and thousands of sick people, many of them without any financial help. But perhaps what is best known about Padre Pio is his great capacity, his great intercessory work to obtain miracles from God. He did it in life. Those requests that Padre Pio made to the Lord were immediately answered and many people saw how their problems, their illnesses were miraculously solved. This is what has attracted the most attention and I think that is what has made the devotion to Padre Pio spread rapidly throughout the world. It is also well known that he had the gift and the suffering of the stigmata. When one goes to his birthplace in Pietrocina, near uh, Naples, there are so many memories of him, so many cloths that covered his hands full of blood or that soaked the shirt on the side. I don't know if before St. Francis there were other saints who received it, but what I know is that St. Francis received it after asking the Lord on Mount Auvergne, I want to love like you and suffer like you. The Lord gave him the gift of the stigmata to someone who was already suffering a lot because by that time he was practically blind. These are the two best known things about Padre Pio, the miracles he performed and the uh, and that he performed so many. And also the stigmata as a signature of the crucified one. For example, he was a great confessor, the gift he had, the gift that God had given him to know people's consciences as soon as he saw them, as soon as he looked into their eyes, he could identify in the penitents who came to confession when they were being sincere or when they were hiding some sin and he would tell them so. He was a great confessor and I would like to emphasize this. He continually encouraged us. He encouraged those who came to him looking for miracles. He encouraged them to ask for great miracles, the great gift of God's forgiveness after a sincere repentance and also after confession. We must not forget this. In a time in which confession is so forgotten in good measure because priests do not confess, they don't hear confessions. They are there are less and less confessionals in the temples and less and less confessionals where there is a priest available, not even in the determined schedule previously announced. I believe that today, on the feast day of Padre Pio, more than insisting on the miracles he performed, I repeat, he performed them and continues to do so, or on the painful gift that God gave him, the gift of his wounds, I believe that today we must insist on the need for confession. To take communing mortal sin is a very grave sin, and although some priests, even bishops, say that nothing happens or that sin does not exist or that God knows what is in the conscience, in short, so many things that we hear that are heresies and barbarities, although some say that they want to say to take communing mortal sin is a very grave sin. As St. Paul says, he who eats and drinks the body and blood of Christ without being in grace eats and drinks his own damnation. St. Padre Pio had to face the Vatican itself to defend the doctrine, and that was not a time like ours. There were two or three canonical visits that the Vatican sent to him. In the first of them, the report was so negative that they demanded the reduction to the lay state. 
fortunately, the Pope didn't pay attention to the report and he sent a new visitation. Padre Pio was accused of frightful things. He was accused of having sexual relations with the ladies he was directing. He was even accused of soliciting some relations while he was in the confessional. Everything was false. That man suffered as only God knows how one can suffer and that stigmata were a proof that the Lord was accompanying him, accepting his suffering. But what Padre Pierre really taught was to confess well. If we are devotees uh, of Padre Pio, let us not limit ourselves to admire his wounds or to ask for his miracles. Let us listen to his teachings because that is what Padre Pio really wanted. Let us ask him for miracles, but above all, let us ask him for the miracle of help, helping us to be people converted to God, repentant of our sins, who begin again and again to love the Lord more and more each day. Amen.